St. John the Baptist. Managed to get in the back a minute ago. It's normally locked where the graves are. The graves at the back. Um, but the big wall's fallen down, I've noticed. So with, whether it was pushed down or... Not, I don't know. Aerial terrace over there. I have been in. I've got a video somewhere. This is where Brandy, Zara, Maggie, me often walked. One of our little walks would be just coming in here. And uh, I said the gate is normally locked where the dustbins are kept. I managed to get some on mobile. Just in case if I come back it's locked again. Although you can get over the wall actually. Probably what people have done. I'm just doing a video of the way in. See it, the gate is normally always locked like that. But it's normally padlocked. And there's a way in there. I noticed this hadn't been locked. Look. I can get out anyway if, I, if someone locks it behind me. I can get out. This is where homeless people would probably come and shelter. The wall has probably given way because of, um, well, wear and tear. So, I have been in here a long time ago, but I didn't video as far as I know. And I'm not quite even sure where those pictures would be now. But I have done it in the past. But for quite a long time now, you haven't actually been able to get in. There's a few old graves in here though. When they did some extension work here, they had to, um, they, they found a, obviously dug up a load of buried people from a long time ago. I'm not quite sure what happened, has, uh, whether they um, reinterred them somewhere else, I'm not sure. There's a gate into the um, Grove Park house there used for some time now. And then we've got in memory of Mary, widow of the late William Codley Esquire. She died on the something of July 1864 in her 86th year and Lieutenant Cur Colonel William Codley, son of the above, who departed this life August the 17th, 18. Looks like 83, age 16, or 63, or 33. I'm not quite sure what that says. William Henry Codley, only son of Esquire Codley. So that's Codley's. There's quite a few reverends buried in here as well. The Reverend James Pierce of Shalacombe in the county of something departed this life. Yeah, there's a lot of that all broken off now. Michael Burke, Esquire, eighteen thirty-eight. Age 79. And you've got this little tiny, this lovely little urny type thing of sacred to the memory of Alice, second daughter of the Reverend James Paley, or Paley, vicar of Laycock Wilts, and Alice's wife, who died April the 4th, 1838, after an illness 
age 20, and of Sarah, eldest daughter of the above-named James and Alice, who died January 1865, age 50. So that's that one. Yeah, it's up there, the, the wall. I'll show you when I get up there closer. The wall is totally collapsed along there. Totally collapsed. There's the yew tree. And um, here we got in loving memory of Constantine Beger Lacine of the late Constantine John and Augusta Lace. Lay Sin died October the 1st, 1884, interred in Kensal Green Cemetery, London. A lot of people had tombs up there and vaults. Quite a few of the Kennaways that belong to the family on um, my grandchildren, Jack and Lucy's side, are buried in Kensal Green in their own tombs. Then we've got this little one here. Behind these bars, Mary Edwards Savory, eldest daughter of the late Andrew E. Butler, Esquire of Carleon, Monmouthshire, and wife of Charles Savory, Esquire, King Square, Bristol. She died at Weston on the 10th of August, 1842, age 47. Those only who have mourned the loss of the one so loved and valued can tell how dear to the survivors is the last resting place of something, I can't read that bit. It's quite a new church, this one, but it's on the site of an older place. Because the sea probably was lapping up here, you see. Um, it's on the site, so there's an old cross out the front. So though this church itself is relatively new, like, you know, maybe a couple hundred years old, that's new, you see. Um, there would have been some sort of site here for a long time. This top of the Grove Park house. Grove Park's over there, where I walk every day. Zara and uh, Maggie have left now. They've moved away. So, um, it's only me. Left in Weston, apart from Joni and Joe, I don't see. There's another church in the distance there. Yeah, I thought it was worthwhile coming in to do a video. I've taken a picture of this grave here of um, Thomas Carrington Scott Esquire of the ben Bengal Civil Service who died October the 4th, 1848, age 38. I mean, he could have been one of those in all that um, mutiny going on over there in that, around about that time, just before the mutiny. There was a lot going on over in India. Yeah, so we've got this wall here, then for some reason it collapses. Um, it looks like it's collapsed before in the past as well. It's quite nice in this part as well, we can't just walk round it. Henry Hopwood Billinge, son of the late Thomas Hicks Billinge, who died at Mobile, Alabama, October the 9th, 1858, he's 24. I mean, he might have been involved in um, the American Civil War, 
or that might be too early, and it gets later the Civil War. You can see the wall here has collapsed. There's some graves here. It really has collapsed though, isn't it? Big time. It's almost as if um, a crane has come along and worked it. It's quite a bit of force, so I'm not that over. John Clark died age 21, 17th of October 1867. Of John and Jane. Yeah, so see how this has uh, all been rubbleized? Some force at that. I mean, it couldn't have been a vehicle because it's too high up. Weird that, isn't it? It must have been a fierce wind. A very fierce wind. Look at that. That there. Actually, that's a candle. I thought it was a fungi for a minute. A candle. See, this grave's going all the way down there as well. And this is where the extension was done here. That's where they uncovered a lot of graves. And they did the extension. Right, over and out.